And now, on Prophetic Faith. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to another week's broadcast here at Prophetic Faith. I am Pastor Robbie Barrett. Tonight, we're going into a brand new teaching entitled Implosion. Now, I know that that is a very different title because we're dealing with something that is going to fine-tune and tweak those detailed areas in your life. Do you find yourself in a place where you're always inconsistent? Now, if you ask anybody, they, they often interview people that has achieved success, who have done great things, and they always have this one thing in common. It's not that they did something extraordinary or something way out there bizarre, but they all say this one thing, whatever I did, I was consistent at it. So let me ask you this question. Do you find yourself having a hard time being consistent? In this program, you're going to learn the value of being consistent. And it is, the, the Word of God is filled with passages about God telling you to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to remain in something. And in other words, that is our language today of being consistent. So you're going to learn the value of consistency, but also I'm going to teach you how to stay consistent. Because, let's face it, that's the struggle, right? It's maintaining. How can I maintain? This program is really going to bless you and it's going to help you in your walk with Christ. So, let's get into this program and I will see you at the end of it. Now, I, I want to deal with consistency. This is something that the Lord's been dealing with me on. Consistency. Say that with me. Say consistency. Now, why is it that so many of us lack consistency? I want you to think about this today. Why is it that so many of us lack consistency? Now, somebody will be quick to say, oh, I'll tell you why there are so many inconsistent people. Let me tell you why. Because they lack desire, right? That's one of our first go-to answers on why we lack the continuance of doing something. Because we lack desire, right? But I want to tell you in here this morning that that's not always true. That if I was to pull back the veils of most of your hearts in here today, if I was to pull back the veil, I would see that many of you don't lack desire. You have desire. You have the motivation. And you want to strive to be successful in whatever direction and whatever place that you want to be in your life. So if it's not that, then what is it? Let me show you by the Spirit of God today. And when I show you this today, it's going to help you learn where we are lacking so that we can work on and develop our consistency in God. So if you're in here this morning and you're living what we call life, then most of you have what I like to call structure. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean it by this, that we have a certain way we like to do things. Is that right? A certain way, a certain pattern, we call it structure. And structure is good. It's something that we need to have. But what happens is, watch this, many people lack consistency not because they lack desire, how many desires to be somebody? Come on, just raise your hand. How many desires to go somewhere? Okay, so it's not that. Then what is it, Pastor? Let me tell you what it is. It's when something comes along and disrupts your structure. It's when something comes along and disrupts your patterns. 
So if you're in here today and you have a certain way you like to do things, you have a certain way, you have a certain thing you do every single day, where consistency lacks is when something comes in and disrupts your structure disrupts your pattern somebody needs to say amen an example of this and I want to give you an example because I don't want you to think that I'm coming in here this morning telling you that structure is bad and patterns are bad and you need to get out of patterns and you need to get out of doing the same thing no that's not what I'm telling you because if you know me personally you know that I like to do the same thing every day if, if I was to do the same thing every day, the same time of day, I'll be fine with that. That's just how I am. Other people are not like that. They like an adventure. They like to do something different every day. They like to eat something different every day. They like to, you know, go somewhere. I mean, just everything different. But I'm not like that. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is structure's not bad. It's when we find our consistency in our structure. Let me say it again. Structure isn't bad. It's when we find our consistency in our structure is where we get into trouble. Now, let me use an example, all right? I have a structure when it comes to working out. If, again, if you know me personally, you know that I work out just about every day. There's a certain program that I do to develop my muscles each and every week. And I have a certain structure, a certain amount of, you know, workouts, sets, whatever that I do throughout the week to make sure that I develop my body. Now, if you know anything about life, you know that life happens. Amen. Life happens. So guess what? There are weeks that my structure is totally disrupted. I like to work out at a certain time. I don't like anything to disrupt that, whatever. But guess what? Life happens and things come forth. So then what do I have to do? To make sure I get those workouts in that develop my muscles, I have to improvise. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I have to come out of my structure. I have to come out of my pattern. And I have to improvise to make sure that I still work out those groups of muscles and get all those workouts in within that week. Do you know what that's called? That's called being consistent. Even though I went out of my structure, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Even though I went out of my pattern, I still got it done. Are you with me? That's called consistency. Because you realize that structure is not always going to be there. Again, we use that phrase, life happens, right? Something comes up. Something you didn't plan for. Something you wasn't, you wasn't seeing in the future. Something happens. Somebody calls. This takes place. Then what do you do? So what I'm telling you is, is that many people find themselves in inconsistency not because of a lack of desire. That'll be the first thing that people tell you. Well, you just don't want it hard enough. No, that's not true. Somebody say, I want it. I just have to learn how to be consistent outside of my structure. How many's got a structure? Come on. How many's got patterns? There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. Because you know what structure and patterns do? They help you stay on track. But sometimes the train gets knocked off the rail. Somebody say amen. Sometimes that happens. So here's what I want you to see. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I'm going to look at three or four scriptures right here in a row. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding. Say that with me. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Next verse for me, Dave. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily or with everything you've got. With, put your heart into it. As unto the Lord, not unto men. Next verse. And let us not be weary in what? Well doing. 
For in due season we shall reap if we what? Faint not. Last verse. Mark eleven twenty three. For I say unto you that what whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. All of these scriptures are saying the same thing. You say, what is that? God's telling us the same thing. Are you ready? Be consistent. That's how you win. Be consistent. He didn't say, make sure you do the same thing at a certain time, at a certain way, every time, because if you don't, it's not going to work. That's not what he said. He said, however you have to get the job done. Come on, somebody. However you have to get the task done. Sometimes you got to do it this way. Sometimes you got to do it that way. But however you do it, just as long as you get it done, guess what? You win. Let me go back to that example of working out. I have a certain way I like to develop my muscles, right? But sometimes it don't happen that way. I don't have the time. I have to skip a day, whatever. So what do I do? I improvise. But by the end of the week, guess what? I still got the job done. And that's what God's asking us to do. But what do we do? We get into routine, we get into structure, we get into pattern, and here's what we think. If I don't do it a certain way, at a certain time, in a certain season, or a certain this, then it's not going to work. But that's not what God said. Every one of these verses I just read you, God's saying the same thing. Just be consistent. Turn to your neighbor and say, be consistent. If you don't have a neighbor, speak to yourself. Say, be consistent. Be consistent. No, watch this. People, so many people think that victory comes by just holding on long enough. Come on, you know it's true. S- somehow, some way, it's just got to eventually get better. That's people's mindset. So go back to Galatians, Dave. So they read Galatians. This is a famous verse. They read that verse, and here's what they think. <coughs> they think, well, you know what? If I just hang around long enough, things are going to turn around. But that's not what God said. He said, if you don't get weary in what? Doing well. Now, we think that doing well is doing it a certain way. No, no, no. If I tell you to meet me at McDonald's at 1 o'clock today, it don't matter if you had to take a train if you took a car, or if you even had to pedal on a bicycle. As long as you get there at 1 o'clock, are y'all seeing what I'm saying? As long as you get there at 1 o'clock, you still did well. So sometimes we get knocked out of our structure. Sometimes we get knocked out of our patterns. Let me tell you again how victory comes. How many is interested in victory? Victory comes when you stay consistent. That's how it comes. Proverbs 24, 10. I, don't, I, I think I forgot to put that up there. Will you put that up there for me, Dave? Victory comes when we are consistent, not if we do it a certain way. Proverbs 24, 10. I want you to see this verse right here. It says, If you faint in the day of adversity... Your strength is what? Can I put that into today's language? If you get inconsistent out of your structure, you're not consistent at all. Watch this. I love... When I got some time alone and it's quiet and I can open up the Bible and just read it. Right? How many, how many likes that? But guess what? Most of the time, it doesn't happen that way. You got kids running through the house screaming. Amen. Come on. 
You got this going on, that going on. Your mind, it doesn't want to pay attention to the word. It's going over here. It's going over there. I got to do this in an hour or so. You see what I'm saying? And here's what I'm trying to tell you. There's nothing wrong with structure, but if you lose your structure, you lose your consistency, then your strength is small. That's what he said. He he said, watch this, life's going to happen. Things are going to come your way to try to disrupt you. And God says, if you lose your tenacity, if you lose your, uh, your ferociousness, there's a good one. If you lose that in adversity, what did you really have to start with? Come on, how many know? It's easy. And you got yourself in a perfect little bubble and everything's going good. It's easy to focus. It's easy to, Lord, I just want to bless you today. But it's hard when you, you've had a rough day, you had a Monday or whatever. And you get there by the end of the day and you're spending time with God. It's hard to press in to get into His presence. But God says this, if you faint in the day of adversity... If you find yourself being inconsistent outside of your structure, your strength is small. And I'm going to deal with that in just a minute. Here's what I want you to see. There are two forces at work to disrupt your life. Two. Hold that up if you're with me today. Two. Two forces. And I'm dealing with the title of this message today is called Implosion. What is the definition of implosion? It's a sudden failure or collapse of an organization or what? System. So there are two forces in your life that causes implosions, that causes your structure, come on, that causes your system, that causes your way of doing things to do what? To collapse. And I'm going to deal with those two forces today. Number one... Watch this. Number one, the first force is Satan. Satan knows. Here's what I want you to see is that Satan knows mankind. I mean, he knows mankind. He knows how man thinks. Do you want to know why? Because he has studied man for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Studied mankind. Studied his nature. Study how he reacts, how he responds to things. And I think it's hilarious how people are under the delusion that you are smarter than Satan in your own mind. Come on. In your own wisdom. That's a joke. The only way you stand a chance against the enemy is by the wisdom and the power of God. That's the only way. Because, watch this... The word of God goes as far to say is that Satan's mindset, and you can look this up for yourself. Jesus said Satan's mindset is the mind of a man. A carnal being. That's how he thinks. So he knows the mind of man. And this is what he does. He likes to cause disruptions in your life. He likes to disrupt your structure. Why? Because he knows that as long as you stay in your structure, as long as you're able to do the certain things you want to do a certain way at a certain time, you will stay in that harmony. Amen. You will stay in that peaceful state. And so when you stay in that peaceful state, guess what? You stay in your consistency. Amen. Come on, how many knows if if you're able to pray at a certain time without any distractions, without any limitations, 99.9% of the time, you're going to pray. Amen. So he realizes and he understands that if he can disrupt your system, if he can disrupt your patterns, he can most likely take out your consistency. And what did I say your victory is? Consistency. That's how you win. It's not you doing a certain thing a certain way. It's that you somehow, some way you get it done. That's consistency. And Satan knows that as long as you remain consistent, you are going to win over him. 
every time. So he knows man. Somebody say, he knows me. And he knows that if certain things disrupt my patterns, if certain things disrupt my structure, then it's most likely going to pull me out of my consistency. And if I'm pulled out of my consistency, then I'm pulled out of my victory. Come on, you, you understand what I'm talking about. You don't read like you should. You don't pray like you should. You don't spend time with fellow, in fellowshipping with God like you should. Your mind is not thinking upon the things of God like you should. Why? Because your structure is out of whack, right? Ah. All right, so I want you to look at the temptations. Not the band, but the temptations of Jesus. Now, we've looked at this many different ways, and, and you've heard many different messages preached many different ways, and, you've, and I've told you this, and that's because the Word of God is living. There's always more revelation. But I want you to see the temptations. Now, what was Satan after when it comes to Jesus? I, I, want you to, I want to make you think in here today. What was Satan after with Jesus in his temptations. You want me to tell you? He was after Jesus' consistency. Praise God. So, as I asked you before, do you find yourself being inconsistent? I, I mean to do this, I mean to do that, but I never seem to stay with it, to stick with these things. How do I do it? So as we've been learning in this program today and in next week's program, we're learning how we can stay consistent. See, patterns are good. Everybody's got patterns. As human beings, we like to do things in patterns. We like to do things a certain way. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is with patterns and where it can become an issue is when we think that if it goes off the pattern whatsoever, then I can no longer be consistent you're going to be in for a world of trouble. Why? Because the enemy is going to make sure that he can cause disruption in your life, that he can cause hiccups, because he knows, hey, if he breaks your pattern, if he breaks, if he breaks your process, you're done. You're not going to stay with it. You're not going to stay in faith. And that's not the way you and I want, want to live. That's not how God wants us to live. See, it's like the example that I use in this program. I like to strength train. I like to lift and exercise almost every single day. Now, does it always happen the way I want it to? No. Life happens. A busy schedule. This going on. That going on. But I always tweak and try to put things together to where by the end of the week, I still get the goal or I still reach the goal that I wanted to reach. Now, you may say, well, you wasn't consistent because you didn't stick strictly to your pattern. But I tell you, that is consistency. So, what has God told you to do? What has He called you to do? But you may have been here and there, to the left or to the right. See, what I want to help you tonight is that God doesn't want you to, you don't have to do it every single time a certain way. What God wants you to do is simply no matter how you get the job done, get done what He promised you or what He told you to do. That's what He's asking you to do. Because He knows that life happens. He knows that things come and they disrupt things. But in the overall scheme of things, can you stay on course? Can you be steadfast? Can you be unmovable, unshakable, as Paul said? So I want to pray for you right now <clears throat> that you will learn your flow. And I didn't say pattern, I said flow. See, you and I, by the grace of Jesus Christ, we can flow outside of our pattern. And when we do that, we are still able to accomplish what God has commanded you and I to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person right now that is battling inconsistency. They can't seem to find their groove. They can't seem to maintain. Lord, I ask you, Father, to give them direction give them wisdom, give them insight, that to get the things that you want them to, to be done, done. May not be this, uh, this, the same way every single time, 
But by the time everything is said and done, they accomplish what you've told them to do. Father, this can only be done by your power. This can only be done by your grace. So, Father, I thank you for your grace that you are pouring out upon your people as I speak. And I thank you, Father, that their end results are going to come and they're going to be in your favor, Lord. You're going to get the glory out of this. And I praise you for this now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Listen, I'm not talking about success in the world. I'm talking about success in God. That when you take your last breath, you want to know that you fulfilled and accomplished everything that God wanted you to do. Consistency is the key. So I want to take this time to thank our faith partners for your continued giving and support to this ministry. Thank you for your prayers, but also thank you for supporting us, for equipping us with the tools so that we can go out and preach this gospel. People need to hear the good news. And these revelations that God has entrusted me with, they are not just for me. He wants me to share them with as many people who wants to hear them. So we've had many testimonies. We've had many people say the, the messages that you receive from God, they are life-changing. They're just eye-opening. You don't hear these things anymore. And that is all for the glory of Jesus Christ. So you help me do that. So I want to take this time to say thank you for that. Thank you for all those who give us feedback, for giving us testimonies, for encouraging us as we encourage you. Like I said, we're here to get a job done, and that is to build and exalt the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So until then, keep walking by faith, never give up, and I'll see you right here. Be blessed. If you would like to become a faith partner, please contact us at P.O. Box 264, Tazewell, Virginia 24651. You may also reach us at 276-971-2333. You may also request information at accelerantfaith.org. Our email for faith partners are faithpartner at accelerantfaith.org as well. command the lame to walk. We command it in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. 